Hello world, Shelly here and it's time for another episode of Foundation Fest and today I'm going to check out a K-Beauty cult favorites or at least Taylor Wynn liked it so therefore everybody should. It is the Ink Lasting Cover Foundation from Peripera. It retails around $10. I got it for about six bucks on the yesstyle.com website. I've seen it as high as 12. The shades are grouped in a light group and there are only three of them. So shades one, two, and three, ivory, beige, and sand. I've got the second shade beige and you get one fluid ounce of product or 30 milliliters. Let's take a look at their claims. They say, gently shake the bottle before use. Uh, full coverage, long lasting foundation that gives skin a flawless, beautiful finish with one single drop. I bet you I will dispute that claim. Offers lightweight yet flawless coverage. Adheres closely to skin with a smooth finish. Ensures makeup stays put all day and that's about it. Looking at the ingredients, it has some silicones in it. It does have alcohol. If you are sensitive to alcohol, it's about midway in the ingredient list. Uh, but nothing else looks unusual. There is beeswax, so if you're looking for something vegan, also a no-go. They don't specify that it's synthetic, so I would assume that it is not. So let's take a look at shade number two, swatched against a few others in my collection. You know it, you love it, it's swatch time. First up is today's foundation from Peripera, the Ink Lasting Cover Foundation in shade two beige. Second is from CYO, the Life Proof Foundation in shade 101. Third up, I've got from Wet n Wild, the Photo Focus Dewy Foundation in shade shell ivory. Fourth is from CoverGirl, the True Blend Matte Made in shade L15. And last, I've got the L'Oreal Pro Glow in shade 201. I've already cleansed, moisturized, and sunscreened this 45-year-old face. I have primed with the J1 Red Jelly Pack. I picked this up on Costco's website. It's a really interesting primer. It feels literally sticky until you get your foundation on, and then it's not. And I do feel like it definitely helps to keep foundation in place very nicely. It's a true multitasker with antioxidants. It's an anti-aging, at least this version of it is, is an anti-aging skincare type of primer that I am enjoying that I picked up on Costco's website. Let's see what we have for packaging here. Dropper bottle. I have pretty normal skin right around now. Dry in the winter, pretty normal at the moment. I will go in on one side of my face with a sponge. This is a dampened AOA Studios sponge from Shop Miss A. The other side, we will use a brush. I've got an e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush. This definitely has a scent to it. I don't see any added fragrance ingredients in the ingredient list, although it does have a leaf, a couple different leaf extracts. It smells a bit floral to me. So if you are sensitive to the scent of things, I definitely smell it. But what a nice, pretty finish right off the bat with a sponge. Good cancellation of redness there on my chin, especially. That looks really nice. I think I am also a fan of this undertone. Let's try the brush side. You definitely get higher coverage with the brush. I think this looks really pretty either way. I think the brush, if you're going for coverage, the sponge, if you're not, I'm gonna take what I've got left on the palette and just try to even out the other side just a little bit. And I think I am going to smooth over everything with the sponge because I just wanna make sure I don't have any excess product because this really does have a little goes a long way. I am quite shocked at how much coverage this has. I mean, that was just really a little bit of product, no more than I would normally use. And it is doggone, doggone near full coverage. I mean, 
this is the side of my face with all my sun damage and I barely see any of it. Holy cow. But I do fear that I used a little too much product. So I want to make sure that I've got excess tapped out. That is a lot of coverage. That is nice, nice, nice. And I really like the shade of this so far. Let's take a look up close. The I did some exfoliation last night, and so there's a couple patches on my nose and on my cheek, on my non-nose ring side of my face that you can kind of see peeling skin that's in the process of exfoliating off, but Aside from it clinging to the edges of that peeling skin, it doesn't really cling anywhere else. It's not accentuating any lines. It's not sinking into them. It's doing a really nice job smoothing pores and smoothing texture. It's not clinging to the texture between my eyebrows. It's really pretty. <laughs> this is a really, really pretty finish. I'm, I'm liking how this looks so far. Let's check the time. We're getting a really late start. It's like 7 p.m. But I can still do an eight hour. That's, that's how flipped my sleep schedule is right now. I am not a day dweller at all. I'm a total night owl. And uh, even though we're starting at 7 p.m., uh, I'm still very likely to get in an eight hour wear test. So let me put the rest of my face on and I will be right back. The Peri Para foundation is still looking good. I did end up having to set it. It stayed a little bit tacky and I tried something different. You know I usually set with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish and someone had recommended that the lightest shade in the new Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Blonde Blonzer Bronzer, which is based on the Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder, might make a good summertime setting powder for fair skin. So I set this with this, the light shade, and then my bronzer is the shade number two. I think it worked out beautifully. So thank you for whoever gave me that tip. It was in the comments. I don't remember who. I'm wearing the usual suspects. Otherwise, Hourglass Ambient Blush in Diffused Heat, Natasha Denona Super Glow. And my lip is the Just a Tint Lip Crayons from ColourPop. And yeah, so that is what we've got going. Oh, I have to mention you guys. Oh, mm -hmm. I got them. And they literally shipped overnight, which is ridiculous. Oh my gosh. These are the new Wayne Goss brushes. I wasn't going to buy them because they were... They're really expensive. They're basically like $60 a piece. Uh, but doggone it, Beautylish and their three payments for zero interest, just, <clears throat> and I just finished paying off. I think it was the By Terry Foundation that, remember that review way back when? Just finished making my three payments on that. Oh gosh, you guys. These are pretty incredible. They're pretty doggone incredible. I feel like a freaking artist when I paint with them. See, I just said paint. I guess I'm painting my face. Oh gosh, they're so soft. Whew. Yeah. They're lovely. Yeah, that's about, uh, that's about all I've got going on. If you like this eye look, happy Pride Month. I filmed this for, it's going to be tomorrow night's Makeup and Chill, barring any unexpected difficulties. I hate making promises like that because then it always comes back to bite me. But it should be tomorrow's makeup and chill. So I don't know if a daylight check-in is gonna happen because we are running out of daylight right now since I started so late and it's pouring rain outside. I'm gonna try right now to see if I can at least get sunlight daylight on my face and uh, check the color match on this. But I'm pretty doggone sure that it's a good match. But let me do that. I'll see if I can get you guys some lights, some natural lights, and I'll be back at the end of the night. We'll go over my final thoughts. Ah, it's pouring rain out, but then I realized I could stand at the garage and not get wet and get as much light as we have left. So here is what's left of daylight. 
and I do think this is a very nice shade match for me. I do like how this looks. This is a nice, nice undertone if you are like neutral, slightly leaning cool like I am. I like it. It's only about an hour in, so still looks like I just put my makeup on because I did. But uh, that's where we're at, color-wise. I will be back tonight, and we will check this one out, see how it wore. 2.02 a.m. All right, so it's only the seven-hour mark, not the eight-hour mark, but I just sneezed 5,000 times, and I need to blow my nose, and I don't want to mess up the foundation, and... <sighs> Gotta love allergies. Let's take a look at how the Peri Para Ink Lasting Cover Foundation held up. So, it's very comfortable. It's very lightweight. It's doing the typical breakdown. And since we're only at the seven hour mark for that to be starting already, it's not super long wear on me. Let's zoom in and take a look at what I'm talking about here. So, it still appears to have clung to any skin that needs to finish exfoliating and flaking off. And that's that's fine, it started out that way. But it broke apart significantly on my smile lines, on my Meredith Grey wrinkle and its cousin, on the nose ring side of the corner of my mouth, on a little bit on the lines on the other corner of my mouth. It settled a little bit into my deepest chin line, but overall that's really all I can say negative about it. The blush bronzer highlight is still intact. It is not clinging to texture between my eyebrows. It's not accentuating texture anywhere. It's not accentuating pores. In fact, they look quite nice. My forehead looks nice. It's not accentuating lines on my forehead. So it's really just a matter of a bit of wear along movement lines. That's pretty much the main form of breakdown. Generally, I think, especially at a conversational distance, it still looks quite nice. I think that it's not unusual the way it's breaking down and it's fairly graceful. There's a little bit of clinging, a little bit of caking around my nose, but generally speaking, it's pretty good. I really like the tone of it. It's got a really nice undertone, which of course I'm not grading on that because that's just specific to my skin. But if I did have to give a grade for dry and maturing skin, for the Peri Para Ink Lasting Cover Foundation, I'm gonna go A minus. I think it looks very nice. It's very comfortable. My skin does not feel dry at all. It's really good on texture and smoothing and pores. If you have deeper wrinkles, it might be a little bit settly, but it hasn't settled into uh, my smile lines or my forehead lines, my less deep lines. And if you have dry skin, I think it's fine. My skin feels fine. Everything feels good. I don't have any complaints there. So I'd say it's pretty good. It's a pretty good one. There you have it. Another Foundation Fest episode in the books. If you enjoy foundation reviews, if you liked this one, give me a thumbs up down below. Let me know in the comments. What do you want to see next? I've got a ranked sortable searchable spreadsheet over on geekoutofwater.com. Click the Foundation Fest link. There's over... 200 reviews on my spreadsheet at this point. The one thing I recently added was the date of each review. So that just, just to give you a little bit more information as to when I performed each of the reviews. So this one will be up on there shortly. Thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. Come back every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time for new videos. I appreciate your time and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.